Well, we're going to continue to develop our ideas of associated with integration, uh, as we did with the derivative. We're we're going to take a graphical approach this time. Uh, you've already, you know, we we just launched right into it at the beginning, and you began figuring out what the in integral was. We know that there are a couple types of integrals. There's the definite integral, and there's the indefinite integral. And uh, we're going to take a look at the representation of integration as a limit of a sum of terms where delta x goes to zero. And then in the next uh, video, we'll, we'll show how this, you know, using a, a discrete approach, uh, leads to the power rule that, we, that we're already using, that, you, that you've already been using. And <clears throat> so the kinds of problems that you've already been working with are shown here. You know that we have a the derivative. We know what the derivative is. And so it's kind of a guessing game. What was it that we had to differentiate in order to get this? We found that was x squared plus 1 to the minus 1 power. <clears throat> Likewise, with these derivatives, we guessed, we reasoned backwards that we'd have to differentiate uh, something like uh, this in order to get this term. And so using the integral notation, uh, we identify this process that we're going through by an elongated S. Uh, we put the term that we're trying to figure out, you know, what it was that we had to differentiate in order to get this. Uh, following this symbol, remember this is our integrand, and it's being integrated over the independent variable dx. So, uh, <clears throat> likewise with this function, we put it inside the integral sign. It's basically sandwiched between the integral sign and the dx. And this is what we have to figure out. We have to figure out what it was that we differentiated this, in other words, in order to get this. And in this last, ex last example, uh, we found that we had to differentiate, in other words, the integral of 4 times 2x plus 1 would be 2x plus 1, the quantity square. So again, these are integrands, and this would be the result of indefinite er, integration. And we haven't included the constant that we know we should have in this case. These are just the examples that we worked through earlier on. So looking at it graphically, this is, <clears throat> this is a graphical representation of what we're doing down here. And we're basically illustrating graphically what's contained in this uh, formula here. We have that the limit as delta x goes to 0 of the sum of whatever f of x is, in this case ax squared plus bx plus c, uh, times the, the interval delta x is equal in the limit that delta x goes to 0 is equal to this integral. could be over some limit, 0 to x. and i over 1 to n, where x would be n delta x. So but we have the integral, again, the integrand is sandwiched between the integral sign and the dx. This is the integrand. These are the limits of integration. This is a definite integral. And x is equal to n dx. So these rectangles are f of x high by delta x in width, and they give us an area. They answer the question. Basically, they we're getting an estimate of what the area under the curve is when we sum together all these little rectangles. Okay? So, <clears throat> now putting it into an integral integral notation, we've, we've got the integral of something like x squared over 2. We ask ourselves, okay, what what, what did uh, you have to differentiate in order to get x squared over 2? Well, we had to differentiate um, x, to x cubed over 6. Remember, uh, our rules for differentiation, we take the power down, we get 3x squared, we reduce the exponent by 1. Uh, 3 by 6 gives us 2, so the integral, we get the integrand back, but the integral, this is a definite integral, what it is that we had to differentiate 
is now going to be evaluated at 0 and 10. That gives us the area under the curve here, 166.67 in this case. Um, it's a definite integral, limits of integration 0 to 10. Um, and, you know, it's similar to the example that we presented with the, the triangle. And so we're getting an, an estimate of the area under this quadratic here by summing up all these rectangles. And when we do that, this is the exact answer here. We get 166.67 as the area under the curve and the limit that delta x goes to zero. And these, these rectangles become infinitely, infinitesimally narrow in extent. They, their height lies right on the curve. In this case, you can see there's a little bit above and there's you know, kind of a vacant area here below. When we do it this way, we, we don't really do such a bad job. We get a, a, an area of 166.25. It's, it's actually very close to uh, the actual area. So, But it's a lot of work, right? You had to calculate the area of this rectangle, this one, this one, this one, this one, all ten of these rectangles, sum them all together in order to get this number, which is actually a little bit off. Now we can improve our estimate. We can change our delta x to one half in this case, from one to one half, and we get an estimated area of 166.56. Again, getting pretty close to this actual area of 166.67. So we're, we're only off by about 0.11 there. So the discrete sum is um, it's a laborious process. I think everybody would agree we have to go in there, calculate the height of the rectangle, multiply it times the width, sum them all together. But <clears throat> this value that we get here is, you know, it's fairly close to the actual value, but it's kind of an approximation of the actual uh, integral. In this case, evaluated from 0 to 10. Um, so if we increase delta x, we get better and better accuracy, but we have a lot more work to do. We've got a lot more rectangles to sum up, and uh, that makes it a more difficult task to, to get the kind of precision that we get if we just evaluated the actual integral. So again, just note that the sigma becomes a, what we call the integral sign, this elongated s, and delta x, as usual, becomes dx. And the next time we're going to use the discrete sum, we'll start off with this, and we'll show that we can actually end up with this, uh, the terms that we see over here. We'll, we'll develop the uh, integral, uh, we'll specifically the power rule, by using a discrete uh, sum approach. So, see you next time.